Commission. So I have the privilege of kind of covering some things that uh, you might have missed. So one thing. Can you use the mic? Yes. You want both? No. The big one, okay? Yeah. Um, what I want to make sure um, some of you, if you have a big area to cover in terms of volunteers, is during my first race, I burned out so many people because they were working every single week. My subsequent campaigns, what I did was I had Team A, Team B, Team C, so that not one person had to work every week, but that you would rotate people based on mailings or any other kind of chores. Uh, I'm gonna reemphasize about using your volunteers and feed them well. They're always <laughs> hungry, but make sure you have a lot of stuff around for them to eat because if they're with you a couple of hours or more, that's very, very important. And again, uh, to be sure you say thank you. How many of you currently are struggling with your questionnaires from all the organizations? A, a few. Um, it's a big job, but be sure you complete them. It's very important. The newspapers are going to begin asking for uh, time that you spend on, on the uh, documents. I know for every one that I do, I spend a full day on it. And if there are 15 questions, you have to answer all 15 questions. So keep at it. Get some help. Ask people you know, what their opinions are, and then for formulate your own. Uh, I'm going to end with um, how do you maintain your state's personship during the race? Uh, I just have this one saying, rise above it. Rise above the fray. Be the state's person that you admire of people who you watch on television, that you admire locally, and you rise above it. No matter how bad the day goes, there's always tomorrow. Rejection is part of the rule of the game in politics. And so expect somebody to say no, and then there will be people who will say yes. And one of the strategies I always have is I have my list of people I have to call. And I look at the list, and I'm thinking, well, this one may be a little questionable. So I pick up the phone, and I'll say, hi, John. Uh, you may know that I might be running for a college board. You say, oh, that's great. And most of your best friends will never question your message. They sometimes will not even ask. The people who have been solicited <coughs> in the past will volunteer and they'll say, um, I'm happy to write a check. And you're just relieved that they're willing to do that. So you don't have to push too hard with your friends. But they, they understand and they know. But to keep at it. And I always pick up the ones I know may say yes. And then I'll go to the ones that are more difficult. Mm -hmm. But it's like every morning, about 9, 10 o'clock, I pick up the phone and I start calling for dollars. And you must do it every single day. Same with endorsement. Same with your committee. It takes a personal call to get the person you want that's going to endorse you and support you throughout the campaign because they are your ground troops. When I select volunteers, I put them in their best place, not what I want them to do, but what do they have to contribute to the campaign? And you pick the most talented people to do the talented things that you have that needs to be done. I was very lucky this time. I talked to somebody over some months and I discovered this person was a marketing expert and did um, ads for uh, radio and television. Now, I was a lot, uh, happy camper when I found that out because we cut through a lot of things and these are all volunteers. And actually, I'm using this person right where they need to be, reviewing the things I'm writing and so forth and so on. So everybody has a gem of some kind of talent that you can use just put them in the right place and you can get them to do really important work for you. Okay, so what does it mean to maintain integrity during the campaign and after? I always tell the story. The people that work for you as volunteers 
or that of your friends or acquaintances, you will see them after the campaign. What's really important is if they said no, or they said, well, I, I don't quite understand it, whatever it is, what you always have to remember is you will see them at the grocery store after the campaign. And you will smile, you'll be gracious, and you'll talk to them because they're your neighbors and friends forever. And I have to tell you, people who said no during my first race, second race, they came forward and said, we really like the work you did, and we want to support you in your second race. Yeah. And that's how it works. It's about building the integrity that you are trustworthy, that your words mean something, and that you're just not <coughs> selling yourself because um, it's a popular thing to do. I always want to make sure that you get very grounded on why you're running. Because the race I'm in, the only reason why I'm running is because it's for students and it's for the community. There are all kinds of people inside the system that have their own interest groups and they are well taken care of. And if you ask me as a person, what do I think about teacher wages, I will say, the teachers never have been paid enough for what they do because they're a profession, they spend time, and they are at it summer evenings, and we don't count those hours about their professions. And I truly believe that. So whatever race you're in, be, be genuine to yourself about why you're running. And when it means, do any of us represent our community, you betcha. That's the only thing you can stand on when you're out there. It is about, it doesn't matter if somebody comes to your city council meeting with just one voice. That one voice can become 10, 100, they will follow you for two years if necessary. And if you think for one moment that you can ignore your community, I think that's why sometimes people lose races. It's because they haven't been listening. It doesn't mean you have to agree with them, but it means that you must listen to your community, whoever they are. Because I always know one person this meeting, 10 people next, 30 the next time, 50 the following time, and 100 the next time. Plus emails on top of, on top of that. They have your email address and they're going to be right. So we have a much more informed community. They're much more uh, enlightened. The word that is very pervasive in Marin County right now is arrogance. Our public officials are arrogant. Now, when somebody says that, that is a swat at me, at Jonathan, at anyone who's in public office, because we always have to ask ourselves, have we been arrogant? You know, kindness will get you many, many places as a candidate and when you're an incumbent as well. And let us never forget who we serve. We serve the community, we serve our client, in our case it would be students, and they're always first for me. So, I want to make sure that you look at your institution and what the business represents on your behalf and make sure you represent them. That's what integrity is all about. I'm gonna talk a little bit about legacy. It doesn't matter what you do after you leave office. What's important is that the legacy you leave is right now. It's the, it's the memory that you're going to leave when you're in office. It's not about after you're gone. So always remember, legacy is a living idea. It's not about dead people. And your legacy is when you're on that board, when you're on the city council, which is very, very important. So let me leave you then with a few words about how do you cope with your emotions. And we all have them. We're all human. And how do you count to 10 when somebody's lit the fire under your feet and you have to re respond? So let me just talk about that. I wrote this some time ago, but it still applies. What is an ideal politician? An ideal politician is a person who loves people and doesn't mind glad handing 
and has excellent interpersonal skills, who is sincere, honest, ethical, and has integrity, who has the ability to seek help from others and appreciate the concept of, of volunteerism and team building, who knows how to build alliances with individuals and groups, who respects the day-to-day -day work the administration and staff must do for you as an elected official, who understands the appropriate use of power and authority, and always puts the institution first and foremost, not self-interest, who has the ability to work with the press and media, who does not lose self-confidence in the heat of controversy and understands the delicate role and place of advocacy and being a team member, who understands about winning and losing, and that there can only be one winner in most cases for each elected office, who has a loved one, best friend to share, to care for you, to provide a shoulder to cry on, and who is human and who has a life beyond politics. And let me also say that for many of you, for the first time, you'll be on the steepest learning curve that you've ever been on because there are no courses or education that you can glom onto and say, I learned a bit here or there. In politics, there are no rules. People make them up, and they say things, and they can be very mean-spirited. But regardless of what people say, you must have your own self-confidence and your own groundedness about who you are. So understand you will win or lose, but is it going to be at any cost? And that's a question that is a thread throughout everybody's campaign. The heart, you're gonna put your heart and soul into this campaign. You're gonna work every day, every night, every weekend, and you're gonna work overtime. And your adrenaline is going to be at the highest level possible. But the one good thing is there is life after the campaign. There really is. And you talked about rejection. Um, many of you have been professional people who know what it means to lose. You could lose a job. Many of you know what it means to lose a, a, a parent, uh, a spouse. You know what it means to lose. It's nothing new in your repertoire because you've all lived a life that has had loss. All I'm saying is this race is not going to consume you as it is right now and that you will return to normal life and there will be the Wednesday and Thursday after the election and we look forward to it. If you win, the real work really begins. It's much harder to be on the job as an elector than it is to be running. And just remember that, that work begins when you win. Why is this important to you now? Some of you might have said, well, this is my time. This is very compelling. There's a reason for me to be doing it now. And you all have your reason. Make sure it's not about power, Make sure it's not about self-interest. Make sure that it is about what you can contribute to the institution that you're gonna serve. Um, we talked about do dialing for dollars. Um, I'm gonna ask you the other question. Who is your support team? Do you disclose everything to everyone that is part of your team? I think you have to check it out. You have to trust somebody. But are you gonna disclose everything? I always say to candidates, you are the leader of your campaign. Never, never turn it over to someone else to run it for you. You must lead in your campaign as you're learning. And part of the reason is the final consequences are going to be on your lap. There's always <coughs> been in my campaign the strategic point where people will say, Eva, you've got to do negative campaigning. And I have always thought long and hard for several days about that. And I have always said to myself, if I have to do the negative campaigning, I'm not qualified to do the job. I want the voters to know that I'm qualified, competent, eminently competent to be serving in that job. And so as you think about what it means to you know, say yes to ne negative campaigning, that is a pathway that will be open to you. 
That's not to say if somebody writes a letter to the editor that you don't respond to it or a team member responds to it. You must respond to it, particularly if it's not factual, not true. And you need to be always anticipating those kinds of uh, issues. Uh, the other thing is, what if you lose? What if you lose? And we all think about it. What if you lose? <coughs> Part of it is, ask yourself, what does it mean if you lose? I would say if you lose, you have a gift of time. And you have a gift of time to think about, hey, next time we have had many people run a second and third time. And in the second or third race, they win because it's about game recognition. So there's hope on the one side, gift on the other side, and, and losing sometimes is, it's just what happens in your life, and it's okay. Because you haven't lost yourself. In fact, if anything, you're you know, stronger, and you're more knowledgeable, more, more of everything that you're all about. Make sure that you celebrate each day with something for yourself. If it's little Gary, or little, uh, I can't say Lisa, uh, Lori, take care of your little person because that little person will keep on beckoning. I have a little dog, and the best thing I do in difficult times is pick up that dog, pet the dog, because I get more from that than actually then he gives me much more than what I can usually do. So whoever it is, you know, the best friend, your spouse, you know, take full advantage. Remember, your spouse will be there after the election. <laughs> and make sure that you spend time with that person, even if it's a quick dinner, a quick breakfast, so that you can just talk about the intimate things that you're all about. And don't forget, they are there behind you every single day, every single moment. Um, have some fun as you're going along the camping trail. Relax. Enjoy the day that you're out on an event. Um, you know, you can relax a little bit, and then you have to start, you know, handing out and start, you know, greeting the people and so forth. But take some time for every event that you enjoy it for for what it is. You know, don't. Uh, many of you already said, uh, stop eating during the campaign. Don't stop eating. You know, just make sure you drink enough water to, to not get hydrated and or dehydrated. But just take care of yourself during that time. Um, plan for election day about what it is that you're going to be doing. Because when you see the end, it's when you're going to be able to see from this point on. So think about that day of election. And I want you to plan the celebration, whatever it is. You might want something at home. You might want to go to a restaurant. You might want to, you know, wherever you, you're going to have it. But you lead on that event. It's going to be a celebration for you and your team and all your supporters. And reflect on what you're learning. And you notice I said, you know, I just came up with this, um, having done the four seminars for uh, 6 AD. Because there are a lot of things we don't know about. And we were piloting some uh, program things that um, during that time, like you know, social networking and being very specific about it. And I thought to myself, you know, as a candidate, I don't know everything. But doggone it, I'm going to continue to lead and learn at the same time. Because there's so much new that candidates are doing. And younger candidates, and it's really not about age, but really you know, young at heart, where they really are getting to some alternative ways of campaigning and kind of setting the stage for, for, for what's to come. So if you have done some things before, try something new this time. Try something new that you've never tried. Um, do not take anything for granted. That means people who might be with you during the first month of the campaign might disappear. Sometimes people steal your people onto other campaigns. Do not let that derail you. You must always have a backup plan. And just, be, you know, you can be disappointed, but don't let it derail you. 